when I was about 12 or 13, um, I remember, such a cliche story, I remember seeing um, a car fire and I remember seeing the firefighters and the police and the ambulance and I thought, actually I think I'd love to be a police officer. And when I got older, um, when Georgia was about six months old, I went to Winchester Police Station and had our interviews and something didn't feel right. It was only then, when I was going through the interviews with the police and everything, that, but um, it was then that I said I wanted to be a firefighter. to me the first time she came home and was like, I'm oh, fine, I'm fine, I'm like, I didn't. <laughs> I love it, I love it, and there are, it's the hardest thing I've ever done. I, you know, there's no getting away from that. Physically demanding, emotionally demanding, um, and, and draining, because there's a lot more behind it, mentally and theoretically, um, to put into practice, rather, than just rushing in and getting hurt and thinking, oh, maybe I shouldn't have done that in hindsight, because I can't afford to do that, you know. At the end of the day, I am, even though George just recently started seeing her dad again, I am still a single parent, it's, I can't afford to do that. Sounds awful, you know, I love my job to bits. It, it's, it does feel like you're on tag. I've never been on tag, but I assume that's what, how it feels. You know, I can't go out anywhere, I can't, it can't, it even affects me as a, you know, I'm, even though I'm a mum, I'm a single mum and I work, it's, I still, a, you know, a 30 year old human being who wants to spend time with her friends and go out. But the reality is, because I work so many hours, we can't, you know. If I'm on call all weekend, there's absolutely nothing I can do about it and therefore I'm letting her down. And then for like the, our relationship it can be quite strained due to that. I think as she gets older, the realisation of what I do is going to bother her more now. Um, I think it only frustrates her now because she can't have her mum to herself, but in the future I think she'll realise the dangerousness of it. Um, and the fact is that some firefighters do leave home, they go to work and they don't come home. And that's, you know, I sign that contract because it's literally a legal binding contract that I risk, will risk my life for saveable life. Obviously, as a nine-year-old, she doesn't understand that, and I wouldn't dream of even entering that conversation. I just say, don't be so silly, that's mummy's the hero, mummy's going to come home. But, you know, the reality of it is some of us don't come home. To be honest, it's really kind of scary every time she gets called out. Um, and you never know what's going to happen, so... You never know what to do. Sometimes it's in the middle of the night though, isn't it, so you don't know. Or it wakes you up. <laughs> and then you're not happy in the morning, are you? No. So Mummy got called out last night. I know. <laughs> like Georgia said, it's... It has got a lot more tense, hasn't it? Because you're yeah. trying to find the time together. Um, yeah. And I'm a real believer in um, quality rather than quantity. Because yeah. I think I think sometimes you can just get stuck under each other's feet and you get frustrated with each other, with her rather, with me. Um, but um, I think she gets frustrated that like she can't have her friends round, um, don't you? Duh. <laughs> I do feel really guilty a lot because you know, as a single parent, I have to work, I have to earn the money, um, and it just so it happens that this is my career. Please. Yeah, it would be cool if it grew on trees. Mum wouldn't have to go anywhere. <laughs> but, you know, it is my job, and I could be one of those people that gets up every morning and I think it's an excuse not to go in, and that terrifies me. So, we don't want to do that. I think you get upset when Mummy can't have your friends here, don't you? Yeah, because you're either on call, or it's either you have to stay... Well, it's very unlikely that you're not on call. But, I'm so, a lot, aren't I? Yeah. But even though I'll go out, we'll, we'll only ever be at a call for one or two hours, three at the very max. But that feels like a nine hour job. 
to me. Like, you know, it feels like I've been at work from eight to six, and I come home and I'm absolutely exhausted. And then my real life kicks in, where whether that be, I come home at six o'clock in the morning from a fire or a car accident, and then I'm home just in time to bath, shower, get my daughter up for school. You know, I don't think my brain stops. Um, where Georgia has to be, have I, it's simple things, have I ironed her ballet kit? Oh well, no, did I wash the swimming kit? You know, I've got such a supportive family, I couldn't, I couldn't do it. I've got a retired nan and granddad. Um, and it's, I'm so lucky to have them because, you know, nurses don't, I've got the swimming kit, it's okay. For, you know, I've had a cardiac arrest by this point. Um, but, and they'll, they'll meet, and they're so supportive, they'll, they'll meet me down at the swimming centre and we all sit and watch Georgia and all support her and not once have any of us missed it.